Hi, my name is Casey. Um, I am a new record producer. This will be my first album that I've really produced ever. Um, decided to keep a video journal of um, what's been going on, uh, mainly to organize my thoughts and to keep myself from going insane. Um, this will be my first YouTube upload, really ever, which is weird for me because I stream a lot of stuff. So I'm used to hitting just stream and then go. Not this whole uh, record it and then upload it thing. So I hope I don't screw up too much because I don't want to have to edit this too much. But yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm doing this hopefully if anybody is interested or anything like that, you can ask me questions and I will answer to, answer to the best of my knowledge. Like I said, I'm just starting out in record producing. Um, I probably shouldn't have picked an eight-piece band to uh, produce as my first album. A three-piece would have been nice, possibly one. Uh, mainly with eight people, the logistics of it are really annoying. Getting everybody's schedule hammered out and just finding a time for everybody to come in and do it. Um, I should elaborate a little bit more. I'm actually part of an eight-piece uh, bluegrass band. And uh, this is our third album that we're going to be recording. And the first two we did in different methods. The first one, we just had one condenser mic in the middle of the room. Everybody stood around it and uh, played around it. When you had a solo, you came up. When you stood in the background, you just stood back and stuff like that. That's called uh, old style bluegrass recording, or as I like to call it, because that's what they used back in the old day. Uh, if you watch Your Brother, Where Art Thou? It's a very good example of how they did that. The second album we did, we had a system, a board with all of our own individual mics and stuff like that, but we just rec recorded straight to my laptop actually, and uh, just plugged it straight in and then just played and then did our whole thing. Just one take and we are done. I finally convinced my band to go with the multi-tracking route, which um, for anybody who's not familiar with that, it's when the leader of the song lays on what's called a scratch track, or most of the time it's the whole band, but uh, for us we only need one person. They lay down them playing guitar and singing the song. Then they go back and record their vocals over it, and then just their guitar over it. And then everybody individually comes in and just lays down their part on top of it, basically. Listen, listen to it on headphones while they record it. And then, theoretically, by the end, you can just take all those parts and put them together, and uh, you got your track. The good thing about those is that you can master each individual part, um, a lot better, and it makes a lot clearer sound, and you have way more control on it, stuff like that, and I've been really pushing my band to do this for the past two albums, but they didn't want to because they thought it would be a lot more time invested, which there's a little bit more time invested than the last few times, but for the most part, it's just me investing a whole bunch more time, because I have to be there for every single recording, and then once that's done, I have to spend probably approximately two to three hours on each song mastering it and making sure all the parts are the right level and this when this part needs to come up here, when this part needs to come down here, so on and so forth. If you ever want to watch me do this at all, um, we have a site, justin.tv slash jollylamas. I'll put that in the comments, that um, is always live streaming of us recording and also me mastering, which I don't see as very interesting, but I figured, hey, if we're streaming recording, we might as well stream mastering too. So if you ever want to watch that process, you can watch that. Um, yeah, so right now we're currently at... We don't have any songs done. It's been about three weeks. 
and we have one that's close to done and probably about three or four that are maybe 50% recorded, not even mastered or anything yet. And I'm, I'm a little worried, honestly. Uh, the thing about it is, is there's one guy in our band who's very committed to getting this done. He's here whenever he can be. The other guys just aren't. They're, they're, they do their own thing. They come in at their own schedule, and it's it's a little worrisome, not going to lie, because uh, the one guy who does everything that he can has all of his scratch tracks done, and he's got all of his parts on all the other scratch tracks done. Problem is, there's only one other scratch track than his, because the other guys haven't come in to do it yet. So, so that's where we're at currently with the, the CD. Um, I'm trying not to push it too hard, because I know if I get on them about it and try and make sure that they come in and do it, it's not going to matter because they're still just going to do whatever the hell they want to. Uh, right now, where we have a little bit of a dilemma, um, we had some issues recording. At first, we tried to record and plug the board straight into my laptop, and that overloaded my laptop, and our best guess on that is because the sound card on my laptop isn't great. So the conversion from analog to digital was just a little bit too much for it to handle. So it would just crap out every, I think it was like 30 seconds usually. Um, so that didn't work. So a buddy of mine uh, lended us his, okay, what's the company? I think the company is Zoom. It's uh, Zoom H4N uh, recorder. And we went straight from our board into that. And I've been using that for multi-tracking. And that actually works phenomenally. If you ever need to do any on-the-go recording or you just need a cheap multi-tracker, get that because it's, it's, it's an amazing piece of machinery. It's about 300 bucks, and it just does fantastic. Um, our dilemma with that, though, is that he needed that back. And so we don't have 24-7 access to this piece of recording equipment, which is kind of a bummer because we kind of need to be recording whenever we possibly can. And to not have that readily available kind of sucks. So we were talking with the rest of the band and seeing if we can get one. Um, with some gig money that we get somewhere down the line. And the problem with that is, is getting a consensus from eight people kind of really sucks. It's um, hard to get eight people to agree on anything whatsoever. So, I don't know. Uh, hopefully this gig that we play this weekend, uh, we can put that money towards it. Um, it's really up to them. Sorry for that noise. I'm making coffee because it's 6 o'clock in the morning. My body decided that after two days of 12 hours of sleep that it needed to get a day of three hours of sleep. So, I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, uh, we were thinking about getting an, an H4N of our own. Uh, I was told to do some research between the H4N and the H2N and see which one was better for us. Uh, if you have any dilemmas on that whatsoever, uh, H2N, is, is, uh, from what I saw, it was an amazing recorder. The mics on it are fantastic. Uh, it's got way more options than the H4N. The only, the big difference and the only reason that we're leaning towards the H4N is the H2N does not have the multi-tracking capabilities that the forehand does. Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, if you don't need to multi-track, if you're like a solo artist, or you're just looking to record live gigs, or something like that, get the H2N. It's an amazing piece of machinery. Um, but if you're looking to do a little multi-tracking, 
go with the forehead because it's a lot better. So yeah, um, I guess that's really all I really wanted to talk about this far. Um, I'll be continuing on with my uh, video blog, which is a weird new thing for me, but um, as the weeks come, and yeah, hopefully continue on until that CD is freaking printed and ready to go, and I can hold it up right here and be like, look at what I did, or I helped do. Um, yeah, being a producer is freaking ridiculous. It's one of the most ex amazing experiences I've had, and it's one of the most frustrating. It really is. Um, but I love it. Hopefully, after I get this thing done, I'll be able to move on and uh, help some of my friends produce CDs. Maybe produce them for them. But I don't know. We'll see. Um, I guess that concludes this entry of my video blog. So I'll check back with you later, whenever I feel like it.